Hi knitters! Um, I know it has been a while. Uh, I don't know if you knew this. Um, I'm not sure how well known it is, it is internationally, but in the US there's a very huge knitting event called Rhinebeck. Um, it's actually, so there's multiple events that make up what we know as Rhinebeck. There's cake wool, there's woolen folk, there's indie untangled, and then what is commonly called Rhinebeck, which is New York Sheep and Wool Festival that happens Saturday and Sunday of whatever Rhinebeck weekend is usually designated. Um, and that's at the Duchess State Fairgrounds, I'm pretty sure, or, or County, Duchess County Fairgrounds uh, in Rhinebeck, New York. So it's upstate New York, and it is probably one of the biggest knitting events possibly in the world, but definitely in the US. Um, I have always, always wanted to go to Rhinebeck ever since I heard about it when I first started knitting. And um, so part of why I bring that up is this episode is about my Rhinebeck knits, but also the process of me making my Rhinebeck knits. Um, I wish I could say it's been just fun and games while I've been planning this and knitting for it, preparing, but it has been a journey and I would like to talk about it with you guys before I get into that well actually part of that the first knit I'm wearing is it's a lot it's called the Rhinebeck Cardi actually the Rhinebeck Cardi and it's part of Knit Collage's fall make-along so how Knit Collage's make-alongs work is designers submit their designs um, there are votes tallied and whichever designs win as that make-along pattern, um, there are several options, but whichever ones win, there are kits available for those uh, patterns and it's only exclusive to those make-along participants. And this is one of them. They are still available now. I highly recommend you guys check it out because I don't know if you noticed this, but I'm in love with this. So I know, <laughs> It's, I made mine longer than they suggested. I went an additional skein to add some length. It's actually supposed to be like a cropped bomber look, but I wanted my cardigan long to be extra dramatic um, to fit me. So all that to say, I this was my first time working with Knit Collage actually. I keep this skein here from Knit Collage, but this is old daisy chain and it's discontinued and I basically just use it as decoration. I just, I love it so much. There's little bits of daisies. They do make daisy chains still, but it, the white with like bright pink doesn't happen anymore as far as I know. So that was my only experience with Nicolage. Again, never worked with it. So this was my first. Um, the main yarn base I chose is called Spun Cloud, Spun Cloud. And it is like, it does felt, not felt, like you know how the, it gets the foofy bits? Because it's not, technically high spun. It's called spun cloud. I know there is a spin, uh, but it's done with like little threads of Stellina. And if you don't know what Stellina is, it's little threads of like silver or gold, almost foil, like kind of what they make for tinsel um, on Christmas decorations. But it's very, very delicately done. So you can't really see it on camera. Maybe you can. Yeah, like right here. It's either silver or my hair. Oh no, it is silver. Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you guys have the same problem, but my hair gets caught in my knitting constantly. And because I like a lot of light colors, my very black hair stands out a bit. But anyway, all that to say, in person, you can see all these little shiny bits of gold and silver. It's subtly done, but I just, I love it so much. I like it so much. The collar I know is gonna be a bit much for most people, I feel like, but the collar is detachable. You can make it and just tie it on when you wanna wear it, or you can leave it off, not make the collar at all. It's totally up to you. And that's what I really liked about this pattern, that it is very customizable. Like I said, I added length. I went a little bit bigger on the collar to suit my personality. <laughs> um, but yeah, so Reshma, a Hello Lavender, she also made this exact one, but she made hers super cropped, so cute. Um, and we're gonna take twin photos uh, while we're at Rhinebeck. So this is my, f not the chronologically first Rhinebeck sweater, 
but the first one I wanted to show you guys. And if you see me sweating on camera, please mind your business. No, I'm kidding, but I actually do because it is very hot in my apartment. The sun is beating down on me and Salt Lake is supposed to be very autumnal and by looks it is, but it still feels quite warm, especially in this wool thing. I am dying. It's fine. It's fine. I can do the video. So that's the first one. And again, the link will be below. If you use my link to get to them and purchase, um, it'll help me a little bit. Um, not a huge amount, but it'll help me a lot. I, I am an affiliate, so I, it shows them that they want to continue a relationship with me. So it'll be great, even if you just check it out. Um, that would be amazing, guys. I really appreciate it because I really want to keep working with them. I love this design. It's so cute. Um, and again, I'll stand up real quick. Boop, boop, boop. Hi. Yeah, I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. Um, okay, so that's one of them. The second one is probably my happiest raglan ever. So I have reached an understanding with myself that raglans are a bit of a hit or miss for me. I love the slight structure that the raglan gives without me having to do a seamed piece set in sleeves. I love that. However, many raglan patterns, the raglan itself, the little side bit goes too long. So I end up with this weird bat wing look that just doesn't look good. All that said, this is the season sweater by Ozetta. Yes, my Ozetta obsession continues. This season sweater is the best fitting raglan I have ever made. It is so cute. So this design, the texture is done with half fisherman's rib. If you don't know half fisherman's rib, it's like a more approachable brioche. Personally, I had more fun doing brioche, but I always found brioche very intimidating when I was a newer knitter. And even, not even newer, just a couple years ago, I found brioche very intimidating. So if you wanna tip your toes in it, but get the look of brioche, this is a great option. So the colorway I used was Explorer Knits and Fibers, Bryce Canyon in non-superwash DK. I think I showed it to you guys in my last episode, but it was this gorgeous, subtly variegated yarn on non-superwash, and this is how it knits up. It is stunning. I love the way the texture stands out. I love the way that the colors are still strong, but also muted at the same time. And the yarn choice with the pattern combination, I think are perfect. It is exactly what I wanted for an autumnal Rhinebeck knit. I actually, I had a very clear vision about what I wanted. I wanted them to fit the vibe and my vibe. So the vibe, upstate New York, very, very picturesque. Lots of little towns um, with cute little main streets, gorgeous fall colors. Um, little farms, so cute. Um, yeah, so that's the vibe. So I wanted an autumnal sweater to match that. Then I wanted to fit my vibe, which is something dramatic. And then other things that are pastel, which you will see here. So for the autumnal one, this is the first one I planned. And I became obsessed with the idea of perfection as part of my Rhinebeck journey. Um, I think I got way too caught up in having finished objects, new finished objects that I could wear to this event. And it became a little, and by a little, I mean extremely stressful. And I really did this to myself. There's no one to say it's anyone's fault. It's not that anyone pressured me. It's I pressured myself because I've been looking forward to this event. I, I've, for years, looked at other people attending and I've been so jealous. Um, and this was my year, this is my first time going. So I went a little bit too hard. So on the journey of my seasons, first off, I had to undo and redo the sleeves multiple times because when I picked up, I didn't have the tension perfectly right. So you could see where the texture was kind of interrupted. Actually, you could still kind of see it here. Do you see this line? Yeah. So that's what I was talking about. This is actually quite improved from how it was when I picked up. 
Um, and that's, I think it's just because I was impatient. And I always forget that on the first row of a sleeve, I tend to knit it tight. So that was my bad. So I went, I like got all the way down and then realized it wasn't gonna block out. It was just, it was too big of a tension problem. So then I went all the way back and then did it all again. And then I finished both sleeves, which is great. I did the body first before I did the sleeves. And when I tried it on, I loved it. I loved the fit of the top. And then I realized I want it longer. So I had to undo the body again and make sure when I'm picking up the stitches again that I don't mess up the tension like the issue with the sleeves. So I redid the body. And then it's just a comedy of errors with my seasons. And then what I did was um, I wet blocked it. It grew significantly. Um, I knew it was gonna shrink back up once it dried, but my problem then was I really, really wanted it to be done drying for this trip to a pumpkin patch I was making and I wanted cute photos. So instead of just letting it dry naturally and just saying, it's fine, I'll get gorgeous photos at Rhinebeck. It's okay, Aro. Instead, I got impatient and I put it in the dryer, forgetting that it's non-superwash. So the dryer on a low setting on tumble dry can be a lifesaver when you're blocking. If you overblock, make it too big, and blocking, for those of you who don't know, is when you wet the item and then you lay it out or pin it out. The best way to do it is pin it out, by the way. Um, anyway, so when you wet block too big, that can happen. A really good way to kind of combat that is when it's slightly damp, put it in the dryer on low tumble and check frequently. That's the trick, you have to check frequently. But that works with superwash yarns because superwash yarns have a really high spun, they're more treated, so they're not, they don't tend to um, felt as well as non-superwash. I completely just forgot how differently fibers behave depending on how they're treated. So my beautiful Explorer Knits Fibers yarn has lost significant amount of drape. Actually, it still looks like there's a lot, so I guess that's good. But it is definitely not fully felted, not fully felted, but quite a bit felted. Definitely more than I wanted it to be. So like that lovely bounce that you should get from the fabric, the way that fisherman, half fisherman's rib works, I have lost it. And I have no one to blame but myself and my impatience. Actually, when um, Kus Sterling uh, has obviously watched me go through all the emotional journey of my Rhinebeck knitting, he was like, <laughs> after I'm lamenting what I did, he was like, well, what have we learned? Because um, I am impatient, classically, famously impatient. So what have we learned? And I said, I know what you're gonna say, but I'm still not gonna fix it because I guarantee something again will happen or I'm impatient and dumb. And it not, it's not just the felting, like the partial felting, I'll call it diet felting, felting light. So it's not just the felting light that bothers me. What really gets me <laughs> is that when all is said and done, there are two problems. One, I realized that the length on the body I added shrunk with the dry. So if I had just left the body as it was and wet blocked and let it dry at the time, I would have been done by the pumpkin patch. So I wouldn't have needed to go through all this. And then what I figured out when I actually finished the object and wore it, I made one sleeve significantly longer than the other. So. Okay, so I'm holding it, folded. Look at that, y'all. Look at that. It's like a whole decrease that I missed. Um, when I'm wearing it, you really can't notice, so it's fine. I'm not gonna undo this and redo it anymore. But when I say this isn't, it's a very approachable pattern. It's a very approachable pattern. You only need to know how to knit, how to purl. You'll figure out how to knit in the stitch below. That's how you get this lovely little V carried through. It's not a brioche um, officially, but it's very similar. And there's YouTube videos about it. It's actually very self-explanatory. 
Um, that and short rows. So cast on, knit, purl, short rows, and cast off. Those are the only skills you need in my opinion, unless you are like me. But it's a simple pattern and yet it made me crazy because I did this to myself. I kept making mistakes, kept going back, thinking I would change something and then realizing that it was all for naught and I should have been happy with the product as it was because it actually turned out better. But all that to say, it was a great learning experience for me. But I did take finished object photos of it and it looks adorable. It looks adorable. So I'm just gonna go with it. And that's, that's that. So all is well that ends well, but that was an emotional journey with my seasons by Ozetta. And again, everything is gonna be linked in the description below, as well as my Ravelry page, if you guys wanna know. Um, the only mod I made on that is I did twisted rib. Instead of a regular rib, I did one by one twisted. And that's just because um, the ribbing from the pattern itself, the texture pattern itself, is continuous, as you can see, um, whether it's on the sleeve or the um, neck. It's continuous, but when you do regular one by one ribbing, when it's connected with the fish, half fisherman's rib, it didn't look as neat as I wanted it to because it's continuous. I think the eye is trained to look for um, clean symmetry at that point, and it just wasn't doing it for me. So I did the one by one, and I'm really happy that I did because I think it looks a lot better. Um, so that's the seasons. The third I'm gonna show you is this pastel goodness that you see here. This is part of my Flock Along 23. It's called the Cloud Bow. Let me move back a little bit. It's called the Cloud Bow by Reed Keys. It's available in the Pom Pom, I think issue, don't even ask me. It's on Ravelry, I'll link it in the description below, but um, it's called the Cloud Bow. And there's actually two options for the blouse, like I did, or the dress. Originally, I wanted to do the dress. I still want to do the dress, but like I said, I've been a little bit stressed about the Rhinebeck knitting and getting things done. So I told myself, forget it for right now, you're making it a top, and then you're gonna, I'm gonna add length later. It's a very pretty little peplum number, and it looks huge now, but because it's a mohair held single, it has a gorgeous drape, um, so it does fall very in a very flattering way. And because it's semi-sheer, I am gonna wear something underneath, obviously, um, just to protect my modesty. Um, the construction on this was very different than anything I've ever tried before. So let me try and explain this. How you started was you knit a rectangle, a rectangle, two, two of them so they match. That's the front and back. Once you've knit the rectangle, you pick up on one side, all the way up, and then all the way down the other rectangle. That's how you join one end of the rectangles. And you don't then knit in the round. You knit straight for like six more inches. So the sleeve itself, like you think you're gonna start the sleeve, but it's actually not. It's just knitting flat where it's gonna fall over your shoulder and arm. When you finally do join in the round, and again, that's like six inches after more flat knitting, then you join in the round. So it creates this like very, very large body. And again, because it's mohair held single, it flatters, it falls very flatteringly. But it looks hecka huge. And I was very confused about this whole process, but I will say you have to trust it. The pattern is right. Like, don't try to be too intellectual about it and visualize it, unless you're like one of those people that's just really good at visualizing things later on, or like from an early stage, you can just see it after you read the pattern. For me, I'm very much a, we'll figure it out as we go person. So it was very much a, every time the pattern led me to a different fork in the road, I was like, what? Are you sure? This can't be right. But if you trust the pattern and follow it like it says, you will be very happy because it's very cute. Um, the dress and the top options differ in the peplum stage when you finally join the body in the round. Um, I have chosen to do the top 
peplum, which is you increase a lot more. So you get more ruffle at the bottom because I like more ruffle. Shockingly, I know. Um, so I wanted a lot of ruffle, even though I was going to do the dress because I wanted the dress to flow a little bit more. The dress in the original pattern is a little bit more of a column sheath, which I found does not look good on my body type. I have more of an hourglass body type, so I need some extra love around the hips. And that's why I did the peplum increases rather than the dress increases, even though I am planning on making the dress. So after Rhinebeck, I will um, undo my bind off and keep adding length because I love this. The yarn that I'm using, I've shown it to you guys before, but it is Wandering Flock, the colorway Holograph Dreams, and it's definitely one of my favorite colorways of all time. I have been saving this baby in my stash for probably three years now because it just, it knits up so pretty. If you have seen um, Wandering Flock's colorway Cosmic Tie-Dye, I have used them both. They're going to look a bit similar, except Cosmic Tie-Dye is on a more blue, lavender-y, gray base rather than this peachy nude base. And so this peachy nude base, even though it's very similar colors for variegation, it makes a more pink tone rather than Cosmic Tie-Dye, which is definitely more of a cool tone. So for those of you who are warm toned like me, this will definitely, Holograph Dreams is definitely a better choice than Cosmic Tie-Dye, unless you really like the look of Cosmic Tie-Dye. Don't let me talk you out of anything. Uh, but for me personally, I found that because I prefer warm tones and they just, they look better on me, um, the Wandering Flock Holograph Dreams is the way to go if you want this gorgeous, subtle, pastel rainbow. Like, it's just gorgeous. And I'm really glad that I did it. And even though I haven't finished the dress yet, I'm glad I committed myself to making the dress because I've always wanted a knit dress. I have told myself I can't do it, but you know what? I can. If I can re-knit the seasons like 12 times like I did, I can do anything. Okay, so that's number three. And then four, I know there's a lot. I'm bringing five for sure and then possibly finishing a sixth. So this one is made with Through the Wardrobe Yarn Co. Um, she is based in Norway. I have bought from her several times. I've shown you guys this before. This is the colorway Dreaming of Candy Unicorns. And this is her mohair. I used the mohair and the fingering base to hold double to make the Skyline Pullover. The Skyline Pullover, am I holding it backwards? Yes. Nope. Nope, I was right. Sorry about that. So the Skyline Pullover is by Tori Knits and it is her most recent release. It's inspired by the skyscrapers of New York. And if you see the sleeve detail here on the shoulder, it's these long columns that go all the way down to the end of the sleeve. And um, that's where the design element comes in. This construction is really fun. If you're familiar with Ozetta T patterns, and I've explained them before, um, it's that construction where you do the shoulders, you do the shoulder, shoulder, so shoulder. You know where you like haven't been talking a lot, so any word that leaves your mouth, you're like, is that right? Okay, so the shoulders are knit first, and they're little rectangles. Um, because of the design element, they are ribbed rectangles. So you knit two. And then you join on, you pick, you don't have to pick up, but you join them flat. You knit flat for a little while doing short rows so that the back has a little bit more on, on the back rather than the front. You see that dip? And that makes it more flattering to wear. And then eventually you join for the front as well. Um, and you do a little bit of neckline shaping for that gorgeous little line. I love that look on my necklines. And um, it's just really fun. You do picking up sleeves. I really love the way this is done because you can see here just how neat that looks with the short rows and then picking up. This column bleeds into the sleeve seamlessly. It's just a really gorgeous knit. Um, I enjoyed this so much. I finished this really quickly. I finished this in I think nine or 10 days, which is, um, in line with my previous levels of quick knitting. Uh, Sterling often jokes, he's like, oh yeah, but 
well, okay, so people Sterling knows when he tells them that I knit a lot and they always ask like, oh, can she make me a sweater? And Sterling is very nice and he says, no, she can't. Um, but it like, it's not just the materials, but it also takes a long time. And he's like, yeah, it'll take her forever. And I'll tell him later, not in front of them, but of course, but I'm like, it used to not take me very long, but then I met you and now we do stuff. So anyway, all that to say is my knitting has slowed down precipitously since I started doing more social things and being in a relationship, but I don't feel like it's a bad thing either that I have more of a balance because as I'm aging as well, you know, I hit 30, it's like I hit a brick wall. Now my wrists hurt if I knit for eight hours at a time. I actually have to stretch and take a break, um, which is a very new experience for me, but I guess it just gets worse from here. Anyway, all that to say, this goes quick. It goes surprisingly quick. Nine to 10 days, I finish this fingering weight and mohair. So they call a DK. In my opinion, fingering and mohair is not a true DK. Um, it's really just fingering weight, but the way that mohair kind of floofs out, or Surrey, you can hold it Surrey as well. The way it floofs out creates the illusion of a heavier drape because it fills in the spaces more. So it goes quick, it goes real quick. If you have sensitivities to mohair or Surrey, I'm sorry if I always sound like a broken record, but I swear every time I upload a new episode, somebody asks me the same question and then I feel bad because I don't want to address it again, but also then I have to realize that there are always new viewers. So if you've heard me say it a hundred times, sorry. Um, I'm just trying to find a happy medium. So that's the Skyline Pullover by Tori. And then the last finished one. Oh yeah, the Merkel. So the Merkel technically isn't a Rhinebeck knit. This is one I had done a long time ago. I've shown it to you before. But this is another raglan. This is the Merkel or Merkel by Mary Gannon or Mary made that. It is just a simple knit and pearl stitch pattern. It looks way more complicated than it is. It's gorgeous. This is another one of those really flattering raglans that I just adore. Um, this colorway, it makes me really sad, but this colorway is called Pearlescent by Wildwood Fibers and April Wildwood Fibers has officially retired from dyeing. No intent to return. So I am very sad, but I understand why she had to. She has health complications. I think I've talked about it before. She has Lyme disease. So she's officially done with dyeing. And um, it makes me sad, but it makes me happy to know that I have one of my favorite colorways from her preserved in this pattern. And the Merkle and this colorway are so well suited for each other that actually the reason I'm bringing this to Rhinebeck is my best friends Andrea and Megan they got the same colorway that I did in the same weight after I showed them this and they have both knit the Merkle <laughs> so all three of us are gonna have the same literally the same sweater just different sizes so we are gonna take a triplet photo and you know how sometimes we'll do like the same matching sweater um, but different yarns that suit our personalities more? This is the first time we have ever knit the exact same sweater in the same yarn. So as a friendship moment, we are bringing them to take photos and I think it'll be really fun. Um, it'll be a triplet moment and we have not well, we don't have many of them because we live so far away, but this is definitely the first like almost identical triplet experience. Um, the last knit that I'm, I might finish it in time by the weekend. I'm not 100% sure. So this is a cardigan and I know I've already knit my cardigan of the year. I should be done. For those of you who are new, I usually only knit one cardigan a year because I don't like to knit flat. I like to knit in the round um, top down forever but um, I'm knitting it flat, another cardigan. This is the match cardigan. I don't have anything to show you guys. I usually don't like to show anything without a finished neckline because it doesn't look very good, but I literally, I got nothing. It's just the body being done. Um, it's the match cardigan by Kadre, Kadri, and it uses this yarn. So she calls for a bulky or Aran weight. I'm getting away with this. So this is Pearl Soho Linen Quill Worsted, and I've had this for years now. 
I love working with this. So this is my first time working with linen wool worsted. It is 50% Highland wool, fine Highland wool, 35% uh, alpaca and 15% linen. So that's what these little scraggly bits are. That is just raw linen that's woven in or spun in with this yarn. It is wonderful. Like you think that the linen, the little scraggly bits would make it scratchy, it doesn't. Um, because of the alpaca content, it's still quite soft and it feels very durable as well, which is why I'm really excited about doing this um, for a cardigan because I've always wanted an oversized cardigan that gets everyday wear. And this is finally the one that does it for me, I think, because I want it to be, I don't like brown. I don't look good in brown, generally speaking. I have one sweater in brown, but I've always wanted a black cardigan and I wanna make it, but knitting with black yarn, even this black yarn, which has little bits in it, it is hard. It's hard to see the stitches. And now I understand why black yarn gets such a, gets such a reputation uh, in the knitting community because everybody wants a black sweater, but no one wants to make a black sweater. But here I am kind of doing it. So this is my black sweater light, much like my felting light. Um, yeah, I'm, I literally cast this on two days ago. So I'm almost done with the body and I'll probably finish the ribbing on the plane tonight. And then I have all of Thursday and then all of Friday, possibly all of Saturday. Of course, this is with all the Rhinebeck events happening. So we'll see if I can even get real knitting done. Um, but yeah, I might be able to finish it. And it's gonna be really easy to work on this while I'm walking because it's stockinette, but also I have this little goodie. So this is from a company called Geo, oh God, get this little pamphlet. It's called Geometry. She's a little Danish designer, a little outfitter. Um, she makes these cute little leather goods that are designed for knitting. So what you do is you get this little clasp and you put the yarn in, you clasp it up, and then you have a strand coming out so that when you walk, you can knit as you walk. And then you can pull as you need. I really like this, it's gorgeous. It's not super practical if you're knitting a bigger project, unless you put the cocoon bag, that's what this is called, cocoon. Unless you put the cocoon bag in another bag when you have to put your project away, because obviously this is not gonna fit into this. If you're making socks, I think this would be perfectly practical, it's fine. But when you're knitting something bigger, like I always do, it doesn't really make a lot of sense. Yeah, like you could probably get away with putting two skeins in here. I actually have put two skeins in there, but the pulling function is definitely diminished because it just doesn't have room to spin. So it's gorgeous. Um, it's perfect for single skein projects. It's a little bit difficult for larger projects. Um, just bring another bag to throw it into but it's really cute, so I'm gonna use it at Rhinebeck Re Weekend. And again, that's um, the Cocoon Bag by Geometry. I got the large size. Well, I say I got it. This was a gift from Megan, so big ups to Megan. And then the other thing that I got for Rhinebeck from a maker is um, Jenna Rose. She is a, <laughs> fuzzies. She's a designer in Canada, and she creates this gorgeous screen printed fabric like she takes her own designs, screen prints them by hand. And I got this little bucket bag from her so that when I go around to the Rhinebeck events and obviously buy yarn, I can just stick them in here and it's really cute and it fits the fall aesthetic and everything. I had a total vision when I planned Rhinebeck. Um, anyway, I will be taking a series of photos throughout the day or throughout the weekend, which shows like outfit Rhine Rhinebeck outfit number one, Rhinebeck outfit number two, et cetera, et cetera. And I will be shooting uh, content while I'm there and I'm gonna compile them all into one video so that my next episode, it'll be my post Rhinebeck debrief as well as showing you what I got. Um, I'm seeing a lot of designers, dyers and makers that I have planned to meet for a while. In fact, we're planning a little private outing for a group of us and I'm so excited. Um, it's not that I want to like stay away from everybody else. It's just that like I will be going to these events. I'll be going to Woolen Folk on Friday, Rhinebeck proper on Saturday, 
maybe part of Rhinebeck on Sunday. I haven't 100% made up my mind, but I'll be participating in a few meetups as well. Um, it's going to be busy, and I know that. So I just wanted to carve myself, but also my friends who are e way more introverted than I am. I'm considered an extrovert among my friend group by a long shot. So we're carving a away some time for um, people who don't drain our social battery as much. Not that I don't want to meet you guys. Please feel free to say hi. Like, I am not an intimidating person. I know the way I dress is a little bit much, but in person, I think I'm pretty chill and awkward and chill and awkward. So please say hi. I'm really friendly when people do. I'm never going to say I don't want to talk to anybody. Um, but yeah, so we're planning events. Um, we're going to be participating in a lot of meetups. If you see me, say hi. I'm very excited. I'm also nervous in a weird way just because I've never been and I don't know what to expect other than there's going to be a lot of knitters and a lot of yarn. And I'm really excited to show you guys. Um, I have many, many schemes about what I want to get. Um, we'll see how those schemes line up with the reality of what I do get. But anyway, I'm so excited. I really hope I see as many of you guys there as I can. And um, thank you for your patience while I've been one woman sweat shopping it to get ready for Ryan Beck. Um, it's finally here. I'm leaving tonight. So hopefully see you there. And if not, I will see you after with my debrief compilation video. Okay, guys. Bye.